uh, she is definitely the commander, right? She gets in here. She's someone who's, she takes the battlefield. She knows how to win. She knows what she needs to do to get her team through, but she never loses sight that the enemy could be her ally tomorrow. So she's someone that wants to to fight, but not just for her side. She's fighting for something larger. You know, she she has this new, the, the difficult task of dealing with something like Yagaroth and what she can do against them. You know, she's a little bit older. Uh, she's risen up through the ranks, but she's not affiliated with a lot of our other champions. And she's someone that made a name for herself and she gets out there and she's gonna help her team and also like, be a good person because that's kind of what Octavia is all about. Yeah, I I think her story has been so cool and it was a blast kind of working on the, you know, influencer kits that went out to people, uh, kind of just giving a background on who she is, her enlistment into the magistrate, as well as, you know, she is she has a prosthetic leg as well, too. And you can mm -hmm. see it there. Um I, I've seen people, and I asked this myself uh, about uh, this is this is one of her ones she wears for combat. I would assume she has, uh, you know, not just one leg for everything. This is like the one with her outfits. Like I saw people talking about heels. Right. They're like they're talking about the heels. No, hey, if she can fight heels, you know. Yeah, you know, she can yeah. do anything. Is it possible to? Uh, easily showcase her passive um, at the start of this because I, I think this is her, her passive really um, embodies what Alex was saying. Um, Apparently, yes. Okay. Tambo uh, says Anthony's already Thank ready. You. He's already prepared for this. Uh, so I'll, I'll let Alex Alex He's run through ready. Um, what her kit is specifically and kind of the the major themes that um, he and the team are trying okay. to hit. Sure. So I guess what we could start even before you get a look at this gun here, but we um. And I do think you need to be in the spawn room to make those changes. But we can just take a look at this gun real quick. You know, this is the first look. She is, this is her marksman rifle. This is the type of champion that we wanted to design. Side, an interesting note, we wanted to, on design side, is take the concept of, can we make a weapon that's interesting and actually build this champion around it? So we've had ideas for champions, and we also had this idea for you know, we really love the DMR style, the marksman rifle, this semi-automatic high power rifle that I can bring to the battlefield and just like, not dominate, but just really kind of like be that in between of like, I'm not quite a Strix, I'm not quite a Victor. So you see, it's kind of that semi-automatic style. I have to pull the trigger for every shot that I make. So I'm not holding it down and just letting it fire. I have to pull that down and make that deliberate choice. And this is the unaimed, this is our non-ADS fire right now with the marksman rifle, which interestingly, to try and get around some of the problems of just running up on a champion, we'll, we'll get into it, but her rate of fire is a little higher when she's not ads and it also does a little bit less damage. So that's just not, I don't, we don't want players to run up and just, yeah, pull the trigger right in someone's face and say, good night, like, it won't be that easy. But yeah, if we could take a look at the if the passives real quick. Now that we're back in the spawn room, let's see, let's see what she's working with. So this is the big, this is a big change. This is something new for our champions. Um, and you know, I'm really excited to see how players use it. So at the beginning of a match, you're going to have four different passives to choose from. You'll only be able to choose one, and it will stay with you for the rest of the match for you and your team. So we could take a look real quick. We've got commander's cooldown. That's going to give me and my team 10% uh, decreased cooldowns on all of my abilities except the ultimate. So that's my movement, that's my primary, that's my alt uh, ability. Anything that I use is going to have a 10% cooldown. Now this does not, it stacks with Kronos, but those are diminishing returns. Uh, we also have commander's credit. So this is for every five champions eliminated by my team, every member gains 150 credits. So this is just going to be hey, as a team, we're doing a lot of work. We're getting more credits as a team, right? We're getting that war chest and we're saying like, yeah, I want to make more purchases. I'm going to choose this if I want to give my team a little more, they can make independent choices. Next, we have Commander Shield. Uh, this one's really interesting. This one was kind of what we wanted from the beginning. It was one of the first things we designed. But this is, every time I respawn, I get a 500 point personal shield. So you think of like a Torvald bubble shield. It is 500 points, you know, it's not huge, but that's going to give you just a little bit of extra time in that initial fight. Once it's destroyed, it goes away until you die and respawn, and then you get it back. 
Uh, and lastly, but not least, we have Commander's Ultimate. And right now, it gives you and your entire team 15% increased alt rate charge for the entire match. So again, that's really nice. You can stack it. It's like a one and a half of the morale boost. And it's just something that, hey, I want to give this team, because I like my comp, I want to give them a little more oomph when they're choosing their ults. So this whole idea, this passive system, is just to give Octavia that choice when she jumps into the match and she's like, how do I want to play? How, how do I want my team to play? And like, how do I want to counter what the other team has? So this is just to play into that idea that she's a commander and she has maybe access to things that some of our other champs don't. And whenever you select one, um, we did a lot of really good UI work, Cam and our programming team, they made it look really awesome. So you get to choose this and Jeff did this, these great um, 2D arts here. I think these look awesome. And whenever you choose one, we also will display it in your loadout screen so that as an enemy, I know exactly that the enemy team or my team, I can highlight over it and I can see what we've picked and what I maybe should play around. Um, and I didn't, we didn't want these to be really complicated, right? These are pretty simple to understand. I don't have to radically change my play style, but they just give you a little, a little extra strategy when you're playing. And I don't know, like, I don't, what do you think, Kevin? Have you, how do you feel the passives have been in like play tests? Yeah, they're interesting. I, I, I think stats are sometimes hard to feel, um, but I, I think what it does really well is it emphasizes what this character is trying to do from a thematic standpoint, um, which is be a commander and provide, you know, opportunities for her team to succeed, um, mm -hmm. rather than be something that is you know more more selfish options where she just gets you know stronger damage it is something that is what is best for my team and i and i from a design standpoint really love that an octavia player gets to make that choice um and depending on the situation some or or the the matchups like some passives may work better against a specific comp or with a specific composition um so i'm really excited to see kind of how how players, when they get the hands on her, um, are selecting their passives. Yeah, correct. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just, it's a lot of fun to look at the other passive in a match, you know, especially when there's two Octavias and you start to think like, okay, maybe they're going to have this personal bubble shield. Maybe am I going to like attack that very first um, point differently or after they respawn? So it's just like an interesting, small, but impactful change. But we can go in, um, and if it wasn't said before, she is our damage. She's another, a new damage champion. Uh, she has 2,200 health. And we had started to look at it a little bit, but we have this marksman rifle. We had done a little bit of that un ads or, you know, where I'm just kind of firing the weapon. I can really fire it off pretty quickly. It doesn't do a lot of damage because the real meat of Octavia's kit is aiming down sights. And when she aims down sights, she gets this really nice, again, the weapons team killed it. So we get this nice shift in. It's kind of like a Strix. It's kind of like Vivian and Victor, but we wanted something a little more impactful. So we get this really cool custom reticle on there. And now when I fire my weapon, I'm dealing more damage. Uh, she's going to be dealing 500. It says 501 there. Well, That'll be, that's not the final number, but she deals 500 damage and there is a drop off. So she's effective about up to 900 units. As you can see, she can hit pretty far. Uh, she can put a lot of pressure on the point but this is the main way that Octavia deals damage. You, you know, she doesn't have a lot of abilities that are going to deal damage otherwise. So we wanted to put a lot of power and impact into her weapon. And as you can hear, and, and I don't know how everyone feels about it, but the, the weapon is just, it sounds so good. I think Thomas nailed it. That semi-automatic, like heavy Better. rifle feel. Yeah, Tom, Thomas killed it. Thomas kills it every patch. Um, but I was particularly mm -hmm. impressed with this weapon. It feels hefty and it feels powerful, um, especially when you connect with the player, um, more so when you get a headshot. Um, it, yes. it feels like it comes with a heavy hit, and it does in, in a lot of cases. Yep. And you might notice something a little different with this weapon fire too. Like, as you're watching it, you can kind of see that if he's firing, like, if Tam, like our cameraman's firing, like you can tell that the weapon kicks a little bit. It's not like I don't have perfect accuracy when I'm ADS. I, I have to actually like the weapon. It needs to adjust a little bit. So if I really want to land all my shots, I need to find just like that good DMR style or that good marksman rifle style. I need to find a good 
steady cadence for my firing rate if I want to get the maximum accuracy. But that does not mean that you can't just sit there and like, hey, I need to fire. So she's definitely like dependent on you want to she it's good if she's got ammo right she's gonna be one of those characters that you're probably gonna be running deft hands but like so much of her power is in this gun and i think it just feels great yeah i'm a i'm a big fan of um where she landed ultimately um yeah but i, I think the rest of her kit also is gonna highlight um kind of more of the aspects that she provides from a commander standpoint as well yeah yeah, so let's get into that. Let's jump into. Uh, well, let's jump into it. Let's see what yeah. commanding. Leap also, looks she like. is a damage champion. I've seen some people in chat asking about that. Yes. yes, she is damage. And so, one of the ways that she gets around the map is she, she can jump, uh, but she has this commanding leap, and it's uh, no joke. Uh, so, as in you chat can see, she has. The Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, people have been asking about uh, the passive abilities that you showed. Uh, they want to know yep. if that's for every champion or just Octavia. I'm over. So right now, this is just Octavia. This is a special passive that she receives. So when you pick Octavia, you're going to have the opportunity to pick any of those passives. Once you have Octavia, they're all unlocked. It's not like talents. But right now, only Octavia has these abilities. But the whole team will benefit. So yeah, as you can see here, we have an eight-way, an omnidirectional leap that gives Octavia just, you know, she's a damage champion, but we also wanted her to be able to, if someone jumps up on her, we want to give her a little bit of escapability. We want her to be able to move, and that's exactly what this ability does. But we didn't want it to just be a leap. So we've actually added in another layer, another combo. So if the player jumps and then aims down sights, Something special kind of happens. So as you can see here, we get a brief moment of mid-air stasis. I can leap and I can activate this at almost any time. There is a slight clearance on the ground and you'll just play and you'll kind of feel that out. But I can leap and as soon as I ADS, I'll stop for up to two and a half seconds in the air and I can fire. In this kind of in play test, it just we've found that it, like this is delivering a really interesting play style where players now are like, it's easy enough to track, but you don't know when she's going to use it. You don't know if she will use it. And it just gives her a moment where she can like, she gets like a huge power moment. She's not invulnerable. She could take full damage during this. Uh, she can be CC, she can be thrown around, but it just, it feels so good to use. And it's such a good moment for you to maybe jump over a ledge, pull up your weapon, fire, drop down. There's just a lot of opportunities for counterplay and like interesting um, moments for Octavia. Yeah, I actually think one of my favorite moments that I've experienced in playtesting was getting knocked off a map um, and then activating this because there are some some sp height checks where it's not exclusive to her jump, if I'm if I'm correct, um, Alex. Uh, and actually being able to Correct. take out the player that ended up knocking me off. And I still, I still died, um, but it really did feel like a, a, a power moment for me. And you get that a lot with this element to, um, to the ADS while falling, um, I think. It is a lot of fun to play. Yes. You're also super vulnerable and exposed uh, because you are just a uh, damage dealer with, you know, 2200 health hovering in the air. Um, so it is right. something like... Players have to make an active choice on when to use it and how to use it to actually make this effect useful. Yep, and like, and thank you for pointing that out, Kevin. But yeah, like I can use that float ability when I just jump off, right? It's 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 best paired when you're using your leap. But hey, you can jump off a high ledge and pull that out and give yourself a couple seconds of floating. So yeah, and we have some cars, and you'll see that as you get to, to play with her in PTS and when it does go live. But there are things to help in midair. But at base. Yeah, you need to take care of her. You don't want to just jump at all times and pull that up. You might actually put yourself in a bad situation. Uh, but the next part of this, this other commanding kit, is uh, what we're calling her distortion field. Uh, and this has been, uh, which I think is usually a sign of, of there's a good design going on, but this has been pretty polarizing in our playtest. There are moments when we pull this distortion field and players are like, this is great, I love it. And some people are like, oh no, why, right? So what we have here is a distortion field. Uh, right now, she deploys it. It lasts for four seconds, and it obscures 
the players inside of it to the enemy team. So this is going to be a little complicated to explain. It will make perfect sense when you play it, but we'll try and do our best. So, and Octavia can throw this out. And you and your team, so everyone on Octavia's team and Octavia, can see into it and out of it. Enemies right. cannot see into it, and enemies can't see out of it. So I'm kind of creating this nice opaque bubble where I can hide or I can disorient enemies. So I can use it offensively or I can use it defensively. The other part of this is that it does not block damage. It only obscures vision. So players could still fire into it. Or maybe I throw the distortion field out thinking that I'm safe and, you know, a willow dead zones it. Or a Tyra throws out her firebomb. There are counters, but this created really interesting gameplay moments where I can leap, I can land, or as I'm about to land throughout my distortion field, I have a place where I'm hiding. Uh, it's just a really cool moment. Yeah, and we should be able to showcase off an enemy throwing it. Um, Anthony, if you want to do a uh, spawn test spot. Oh. oh, no. Octavia space distortion field in quotations. Should use the ability on cooldown. We'll see. And 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 while we're doing this, uh, like in quotations, the, sorry. The um no underscore. the VFX and programming on this was was awesome. V Roland completely killed it. Um. So this is what you're going to see. Thank you for th thank you, Kevin and Anthony. But that is what an enemy distortion field looks like. Um, as you can see, you can't see into it. We'll get into one one slight discrepancy with that, but right now, um, Octavia, she throws out that distortion field, and, okay, I can't see into it, and it creates this really cool disorienting effect. I'm slightly slowed while I'm inside of it, but I'm just, she's gaining control. Now, because of Octavia, we added a little bit of, like, an interesting combo, so an Octavia can always see into distortion fields. She can see into an enemy's distortion field. She's the only one that can do that. So while your team can't see into an enemy's distortion field, Octavia can see into all of them. So if you have two Octavias, she's going to be a little bit in the know. She's going to have a better idea of what's going on at all times. But as you can see, just real quick, like I, this VFX, and I don't know how you all feel, but like Rollin killed it. Uh, it looks just amazing. This kind of fractured glass look is just so cool. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan too, mostly for, you know, making sure to pull it out from a lot of our other shield-like abilities. Um, just one thing from a, a gameplay effect standpoint is that we don't want people thinking this is a shield that is going to block damage when they're inside of it. And so I think Rollin did a, a great job of differentiating it from something like Makoa's shield. Um, so right. you can understand that I am not invulnerable in it uh and enemies you know can also shoot out of it so you are not safe just because this is on an enemy they they can still kill you through it correct and you know and i didn't we've had a lot of variations of this in playtest we didn't want it out all of the time so you know we put this on an 18 second cooldown um it, you won't be i didn't want players to feel like it's going to be constantly showing up that you're going to be like fighting within these giant distortion fields the entire match like you'll see them a good amount but we didn't want it to feel oppressive so there's some things there to try and help that a little bit but yeah just this in combination with her leap the distortion field it's just like the kit is just i don't know i, I love it it's been a lot of fun to play and it's been a lot of fun to play against i think the way her kit has evolved it's if you really like those like super hype moments those really good 1v1s those really good like intense last second saves she provides a lot of that and then you know we can look at like how does she clear the battlefield how what is like what's her ultimate like and we kind of went through and we found that maybe she needs something that is just going to push the enemy down she wants to say hey Let's move forward, let's finish this fight. So we've created something called the Creeping Barrage. Uh, a, little bit of, a little bit of a victor feel with the barrage, but instead I cast it once, and it goes out in a line. And again, yeah, I think the ult speaks I for itself, but we went, through a, yeah. we went through a ton of iterations on this to get it to feel good. And, you know, ults can be tricky, but I think we eventually got this into a place that has been really fun to play with. Uh, Rollin, again, and our programming team, like, the way that the circle expands to let you know where it's going to hit, 
is awesome. So let me go into a couple of facts as it keeps firing off here. Like, this is a creeping barrage style ultimate, so Octavia is going to fire it. And then she can move around, and wherever she's pointing when it launches, that's the direction it's going to head, and it goes in a straight line. As you can see, there's slightly alternate, alternating beams. Uh, the other part of this ult is that it's essentially two parts, and it's a little hard to see, but it's there. So you have a pre-fire beam, and then you have the large beam that comes about a half second behind that. So that first initial beam does a small amount of damage if it hits. It's kind of hard to hit, and it also pops shields. So if uh, someone's unlucky enough, or if they get hit with it, it will destroy their shield. Uh, the other part then, that second beam, is the main damaging section of it. And that's going to deal, as you can see here, about 850 damage within that radius. And this also will cut through the world, right? So think of like a Furia beam. It will hit everyone in the level. If you're at the top of a building or at the bottom, it hits everyone along that line. Yeah, I... I think this, the most fun I've had with this ultimate is actually playing around it on the enemy team. Um, because of the pre-fire beam, um, as an enemy, you can clearly see where the large beam is about to hit. But it can get very chaotic if you are already in the middle of a fight, um, which I think is what makes this ult very interesting. Um, because it's very easy to dodge when you see it coming. Um, but in the in the middle of a fight or in the chaos of war or you know a battlefield it can become uh, very very hard and i've actually had instances where um panic sets in i get hit by the first beam and i actually dash into another one so <laughs> it is kind of that like chaotic battlefield um situation where something that is easily dodgeable when you see it coming becomes uh very powerful and um hard to actually recognize right yeah it adds to the chaos and it in and the way it's designed is i'm pushing down that lane maybe we have this final push and i want to kind of zone the enemy out a little bit but it's not it's not as you can see 850 damage is not an extreme amount of damage but as just kevin as adonis just said like maybe i panic and i start to fly back i i'm trying to get away from this now and now i'm kind of going back into it so there is a little bit of just, you got to keep your cool. You can move around it pretty easily if you give yourself time to think, but it, it provides a really cool moment of like, I need to take cover or I can't really, I just need to get out of the way. So yeah, the alt, yeah, I, the alt has just been great. So let's, let's take this last bit of time and kind of look at her talents. Um, and we've got three right now. And, and you know what, let's... Um, Looks like... Yeah, uh, let's start with Hell or High Water. High water. Correct. Uh, this is a leap talent. So now when Octavia, it alters her leap. So whenever she jumps and she lands, she creates a healing pool for her and her allies. And Octavia gains, for that duration, she gains no ammo consumption. She's the only one who gets that. So her team gains health and she gains some health, but then she is not consuming any ammo. And this talent is just kind of not like, hey, I'm. this is my last stand. Let's Let's fight. And I think this one, this is your default talent. Uh, and then next we have one called Asymmetric Warfare. Uh, this is going to be altering what we just talked about, her ultimate. Uh, and this is just kind of like, let's, let's supercharge it a little bit. So now the ultimate is going to deal... Oh, I'm sorry, not Asymmetric Warfare. Asymmetric Warfare is a little different, but we will talk about that anyways. This is the... My bad. This is the Distortion Field talent so many words uh this distortion field talent now will deal damage to ally enemies within it and heal allies while they're inside of it and as you can see we also did a treatment on the vfx for the bubble so this while you have this talent equipped your vfx is going to have that kind of really cool electrical look to it that Roland just i think he nailed and i thank him so much for getting that in because it just looks so cool so yeah you're damaging your enemies and you're healing your allies so just another moment where it's like, hey, maybe I want to play this a little differently. Our final one, our final talent is Display of Force. This will alter the way that you use your ult just a little bit. It supercharges it. So now my ultimate is going to deal 1450 damage, so 600 extra damage, and it will root enemies if they are hit by that pre-fire beam. So this is like, I just want my ult to deal more damage. I really want to control the battlefield more with it. That's what this uh, talent is for. Good 
I mean, yeah, I mean, that's... That's Octavia's base kit. I'm really excited for everyone to get in there and play around with her and see what it feels like to kind of jump and fire, use that distortion field, and to kind of command the battlefield. Yeah, let's go into some voice lines and see see what it sounds like, because I think our, our the voice actor, she killed it. Yeah, she, I remember we had so many great auditions, and this was definitely the top tier. Yeah. Well done. Just excellent. I'm no hero, just a leader. Team, you inspire me. Mission accomplished. I'm no hero, just a leader. Hey, hey, there's no fighting allowed out here. This is the battleground. Okay, cool. Let's look at that. Yeah, that's her. The recolors here, these look amazing. No hat this time. She doesn't need it. Oh, yeah. This is her Maverick uh, skin. So this skin will be unlocked through the season pass. So if you haven't already got it, you definitely want to get it uh, to get this, which is like very, to me, it's very Magistrate-esque. So I, I really like that as well. And uh, this will also be uh, unobtainable after the season pass 2021 is finished. So you want to get this. And I believe you also will receive a uh, Yagaroth one as well if you haven't purchased it already. Uh, this is her commander skin recolor. This mm -hmm. will be unlocked with 200 crystals or 60,000 gold for those who uh, have that abundance of gold there. And I believe uh, the 60k gold there, uh, what is it? In our uh, yeah, if you're if you're playing through those trials of the realm, you get sixty thousand gold at the end of that. That's that's a free commander skin there, uh, as well as golden Octavia. So this you know just like any other golden skin, make. Sure